the blue side for the rest of the day. Every game. So our colors are at least appropriate here. Jax, no surprise band, the Callista once again, and Nidalee and Azir. So far, we got the same bands as last game. Yeah, well, will we end up with the same picks as well? Because Giants have no real reason to change anything. So you have to assume in this circumstance, it's going to be the Civ first pick again. If if that's what Giants thought worked out well for them, I would agree that it I worked think it makes well sense. for them. The Lulu's ban, the Corky's ban, I mean, it's the exact same situation. Giants, if it worked once, why not? The other side is they may want to take the Trundle away because they've now seen, obviously, Huma are going to prioritize it super high in their first rotation. Huma, I actually expect to just do the same thing again. Yeah, but this time they shouldn't take the Ramus. Right, well, I mean... I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to see, but... Assuming yeah. everything goes the same. Well, I, I mean here, Trundle, Gragas is uh, nothing wrong with that. Same game state as last game. Mm -hmm. So go Gragas, Trundle. Uh, and then you know Giants last time they went with Graves Poppy here. The likelihood is that the Trundle will go top, though, yeah. in this circumstance. It but should. that is going to be the adjustment here. So now do Giants go completely in a different way and go Graves uh, and somebody else, or something else, and maybe look to flex the Graves up to top lane? It is a pick that Smitty J does play. It is. We'll have to see if that's what he does choose. I, I think the leaving Warlib on the Trundle, just saying okay. that's okay. We're going to be able to take that, no problem. As Wisdom locks in the Elise as well. That's Ooh. something we saw a couple times huh. for Giants so far. And they also take the Poppy. I'd like to pick that up once again, likely for Smitty J. That's an interesting one. That So they're basically daring Huma to take the matchup top lane with the Poppy into the Trundle. Mm -hmm. The Elise changeup is an interesting one. So it gives Wisdom a little bit more uh, presence when it comes to crowd control. Mm -hmm. Has that catch potential? I wonder whether they're going to look to try and, you know, put the pressure onto Whirlip in that top lane by using this Elise. Get that cocoon. Alice says we're talking about the support pick, and it Ooh. gets locked in. They were saying maybe if they want to run the same composition but want to run a bard with it, that would work a lot better for them. Yeah. So that's what well, they go with. Puma's lone win against Rocket yesterday was with Jace Wikas on yeah. Bard. And combined with Illusion, that's a very, very strong lane. Right, but it, yesterday their win, I believe it was with a Jin though, which was the other thing. So uh, the Jin was e able to set up, uh, the Bard Quite was a able lot. to set up the Jin. So uh, it, it was, you know, an effective com uh, combination between the two. Mm -hmm. Uh, outside of lane, I, I still quite like Bard and Lucian together. I think it lets them surround and collapse. I mean, you, you've got a pretty beefy front line between the Gragas and the Trundle right now. Question is, what do they round that out with? What do they give to Godbro? The Twisted Fate, he just never made good use of it. Mm. And if Pepe does lock in this LeBlanc, you have to start thinking, what in the hell am I going to do to deal with that? Well, I mean, if they lock in this LeBlanc, it's... It's not the same type of composition as last time, but it's still a very aggressive composition. Mm -hmm. You kind of don't have the utility that the Lissandra had, where you know you just lock down multiple people and then ult yourself. Uh, in this game, it's going to be more about Pepe dealing damage at the same time. He's going to be able to blow people up. So very aggressive composition coming out from the Giants. Now what do Huma answer with? Do they go with something like a Lissandra for themselves, which is available? Yeah. Uh, I feel like they want to bring a little bit more damage. I'm wondering what does Godbro play into LeBlanc though, because so the Ari matchup is no longer a, a, you know a good ma yeah. as good a matchup. I was actually just Ari. talking to Senkux in the, in the back room about that. Yeah, because uh, obviously now LeBlanc will finish her dash before uh, once the charm hits, mm -hmm. so Still no longer damage, do you just catch her halfway through. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, let's take a look at what Godbro has picked so far. I mean, the Twisted Fate obviously probably not going to be the choice. He did play that Nautilus one game, but they need more damage. The Quinn is an option, but is he going to be able to execute that? That's a lot of AD. So, uh, Quinn is a pick we've seen out of Godbro. Played it into Cos Q's uh, Corky a lot in the playoffs, actually. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Godbro's Quinn. He kept going aggressive under the enemy tower and was dying for it. You know, the issue, though, for Godbro is, is regardless of what he's picked, in the last... The last, this series so far and yesterday, we didn't really see much out of him, period. Mm. And you have to question if he cannot compete with, with, with these players, even though Pepe is arguably getting back to his old form. Even if they make LCS, what will he be able to do against, you know, those typical EU mid laners, man? I mean, what, he's got to be able to show something we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question, but, uh, I, you know, Pulse and I during Challenger were talking about how God, how good Godbro was compared to how we've seen him over the last year in Challenger. Right. And 
it's a little disappointing to see his performance in the promotion tournament specifically because it kind of reaffirms that out of the mid laners that are here in the promotion tournament, he still is in that fourth, fifth spot. Um, I think he and Cade will uh, are fairly similar. But when you compare them even to like the likes of Pepe, you know, Senkux and uh, and Betsy, they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of almost head and shoulders better than the challenger mid laners. So it is tough. It is tough for God, bro. Yeah, well, maybe he'll find some inspiration. Maybe he'll step it up. If you guys think that's the case, head over to LOL Esports, at LOL Esports. Tweet hashtag HMA win if they're going to even this series up. Hashtag GAA win if you think Giants with another Civic comp, albeit a slightly different one, will take the series 2 and 0 oh and move it to game number 3. As the players load up onto the rift for the second time today, Giants firmly and handily in the lead. Will they continue that trend? Or will Huma pull out something different? Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Let's find out. There's our favorite owl. owl. They always got to get that in. There's actually several owls on the rift. Yeah. So. Quinn LeBlanc. You see a bird's eye view right there. <laughs> oh, I see. God, you didn't even mean to do it as well. Terrible, 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 terrible. We've got a million of them. So it looks the initial uh, the initial setting is standard lanes when you look at where people are on the map. Trundle on the top side, Lucian on the bottom side with Bard. So Lucian Bard is not a lane that I really would want to go up against. Um, we're seeing the exhaust come out from Hustlin. I mean, realistically, it's difficult to kill Lucian Bard yeah. here. So, uh, yesterday we had a lot of Ignites on support, specific Minions specifically on Brawn. So, uh, yeah, that, 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 like, uh, that like tilted a lot of our color casters. It did. I remember. I was sat at home thinking, wow, I'm hearing this again. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm saying it on air. Ah, uh, yeah. Streamception. <laughs> it's there you all go. good. Um, but there is going to be a lot of damage that comes from Lucian Bard. Um, oh, yeah. Now, Giants have really made no move to try and spy out a lane swap either. They're, they're playing it out very conservatively. You saw a couple of wards placed topside on both teams, but. Uh, for Huma, they actually are going for a very late invade here as the mini Krug is taken. Sansar and Hustle actually stop, and here comes Jess Vikas. They dodge out Bard Q. Traded fairly effectively until the Boomerang Blade came back in, though, and the Cosmic Binding was not enough damage there. Yeah. The uh, thing is, a lot of that damage that just got traded onto Sansar is going to get traded back from these uh, Relic stacks. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at it, though, look at Holy Phoenix. He managed to get the push on in the lane. So the small minion went over to Sunstar and Hustlin, but the lane experience went over to Holy Phoenix. So I believe he's like, he's even if not one creep ahead looking at it. Yeah, he's one creep up. Uh, so he's going to hit level two first um, and is obviously going to then have the trading potential. Kasa actually hit level two first. Oh, there he goes, just behind him. Holy Phoenix, I mean, this bodes well for him and this bottom lane of Huma. In the standard lane scenario, the game plan here <laughs> Seems to be this really don't rock the boat. As <laughs> yeah, Godbro gets a couple of Raptor steals. Wizard doesn't even notice. Uh, he he will. Not. He saw the. I mean, he's gonna have to. Back. Um, so he knows somebody was there. So oh, that does actually now slow wisdom a little bit. There's not too much experience, but mm -hmm. there is uh, obviously some added on there. So it, it it just slows wisdom down. A lot of it is just because Godbro got the push. In the beginning. So what, what do Huma really want to do other than just kind of prolong the lane phase until they're strong? They want to prolong the laning phase for a while. <laughs> Honestly, well... Glad the, I predicted that one. <laughs> the analysts uh, the analyst that's talked to a lot about this is where Huma's strengths were, and it seemed to be when, once they hit the TV2. Um, get the standard lane set up, utilize that for as long as possible, and then try and split push late game with Whirlip. So that is pretty much what they're aiming to do in this game. They've also got Godbro that can split. Right. This Quinn as well. Well, this is already a better start for them because even though they were doing okay in the lanes, they had a really wonky choice of putting the Ramus in the top and not going with the Trundle pickup uh, and having, you know, to have a Jin Trundle deal up with Sivir Janna, kind of a weird mismatch. This time it seems like it's much more in their favor and even though everything is very even, if Giants don't make a move to try and change that and maybe some Peppy roams around to, to pick up some kills, Mm. I feel like Huma are not going to have too bad a time this game. Well, Huma are anticipating Wisdom either invading or coming bottom side. Uh, just getting a ward down onto where Rift Scuttler will spawn. Will uh, stop any chance of Wisdom coming down to the bottom lane. Also, we'll give them the knowledge as soon as he tries to clear that crab. Uh, we'll be able to take that information away. Gives Rudy a little bit more security in lane. But you notice that Holy Phoenix had to go up with Just We Cast because in the event that Wisdom was already there, Just We Cast kind of goes, ah, okay, I lose half my health. 
There we go. Rudy sticking it in the mid. The chains are on Godbro, and he's not moving just yet. A lot of damage. Peppy dashing in, dashing out. And Rudy does not make a move. No, lifting a finger to help him. Doesn't want to reveal his position. And now he has to dash over the wall as Wisdom was there to clear the crab. Or to clear the ward, I should say. Yep, clears the ward off the pink. But you can see Wisdom, um, he's been tracked fairly heavily now throughout the game so far. We're only just under five minutes in, but Huma have been able to spot him a couple of times already. Trades. Um, yeah, his trading into a bar lane where everything hurts. Yep, as Rudy finds Wisdom, a battle of the red buffs. In comes Whirlib, though. Wisdom is going to have to jump yes. this. And now Smitty J pins Whirlib against the wall. Wisdom could come around the long side to try to assist. Whirlib is still chasing this. And Peppy now coming up on the realm. That's going to break up the fight. Oh, but look, Peppy. Look how many minions Peppy's left in the wave from mid. So he's going to lose a couple here by the looks of it. Uh, just because he's coming up to push this back into the tower, but Peppy's here, so just because I can be careful here. One cosmic binding. Uh, but look, Peppy gold. doesn't know who else is around, so it means okay. So it's it's a couple of CS here, but all of this starts to add up. Uh, you know, Peppy had a moment while Godbro was back in lane, but he uh, he left a big wave to come and help top lane. Yeah. Some good, interesting decisions early on. Small things. Can Butterfly effect into the later stages of the game. For now, though, Rudy and Whirlib are up on the top side trying to give Smitty J a hard time. Really do got to keep an eye on the junglers in standard lane scenarios. And we just we just see standard lane so infrequently now. The way the meta has evolved over this yeah. season six. And a lot of clockwork moves with the double trading of the mm -hmm. towers. And when we see this, and often happens in the lower echelons of play, that more interesting things can happen in the early game. <laughs> yes, there, there sometimes is the opportunity he said not biased. for more interesting things in standard lanes. I would agree with that. Don't worry. I think the general consensus is that um, lane swaps are fun, but every game they get a little bored. Well, when they're done exactly the same way, right? When it becomes well, when it becomes a, a, a blueprint that I you then know. follow left to right. Sometimes the mistakes are boring. Uh, uh, sometimes the mistakes are interesting as well. Because sometimes you see a team botch it horribly. And then it's like, well, you just lost the game. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is true. Uh, which which can be fun. Um, I also like seeing a perfect lane swap. Yeah. I think we've had like very few examples of two teams. That, that is also true. But yeah. I mean, in these situations, because standard lanes we see so infrequently, it's always interesting to see how the players adapt and what they put their focus on. It depends so much on the composition, right? Because yeah. you're not guaranteed the free early towers. And if you have early game damage, like in the form of LeBlanc or Quinn, for example, you start to see some pretty explosive action happening, especially when the junglers get involved. I'd actually be curious to see if Rudy takes another trip down to this mid. He's been kind of hanging out towards the top a lot more. He has, uh, and a lot of that is just, as always, the focus with Huma is allow Whirlib to get to a position where Whirlib can just make decisions for himself. <laughs> and as soon as Whirlib is always be split push. Yeah, exactly. As soon as Whirlib's comfortable, he's like, great guys, I've got this. Everybody get in another lane, let me push top. Yep. Right. So Pepe will pick up his own blue buff on this one. Yeah, and Whirlib, you know, he's very outspoken about this team, about Giants. So obviously, mm -hmm. you know, he, he had been kicked from that team at the end of last year. And I would think maybe he wants a little bit of revenge. Talking up uh, how this team is not necessarily a team. Obviously, we saw the truth of that last year, or, or this last game, we saw the not truth of that. I think I follow you. Yes, I, I think I follow him. <laughs> I think too. I follow you. Uh, it's yeah, hard for him if, if he if he oh. continues to stay in that mindset. He just nobody saw that really. Don't That's worry. That's okay. Uh, I mean, everybody saw it, but um, just body slams into Dragon Wall. So the realms are just kind of coming out here. Godbro is going to be stunned up by the chains, and Peppy's got him at his mercy for a moment. The level differential. Is there, and you can already see a big farm difference. A lot of that's been because Peppy's been sticking in the lane after his roam, but now it could be trouble for Godbro. Yeah, so Godbro had to, when he recalled from top lane and Peppy managed to catch most of that big wave, uh, Godbro didn't have level six, so he couldn't get back to lane fast enough. Uh, so it meant that the way that the, the, the wave ended up was pushed away from him. Uh, for now though, it's a, it's a slight lead. It's yeah. significant, but at the same time, Godbro's going to be able to farm out side lanes very quickly the later this game goes. True. Still, you got to worry about Peppy's kill pressure, of course, on this LeBlanc. Look at the damage he's dishing out. Oh, Godbro, he goes. he's not ignite. using his cleanse here. Peppy's got the ignite. He's waiting for that. Cool down on W. Let's go up top lane, though. Whirlip up against the wall, takes the cocoon. The chain CC keeps on landing, and Whirlip takes a bite out of Smitty J, puts the cone down on him, and he's actually staying alive. Wisdom, too many shots taking up. He's going to go up, and he's going to go down. 
just outside of tower range. Whirlip, can he limp away from this one? Wisdom <laughs> is still sneaking oh. in the first blood as he sinks the fangs. Godbro, though, coming up for the revenge. Will he get there in time? Yeah, he's got there in time. Oh, boom, vaults over. One auto, two autos, and Godbro gets revenge. The daredevil play heightened senses, hits that W, spots him out, gets him with the ultimate. She's followed him here. Uh-oh, ah, goes right on up. Chains are on, he vaults over. Chains have gotten broken and he gets the mirror image here. Teleport coming in. Godbro, does he have the damage? He might. Oh, the clone's gonna block one, but Godbro manages to finish the outplay. Smitty J's up here, but now he's caught between three Huma members. Forced to flash back. Forced to flash back, but utilized his teleport and actually completed it as well. Rudy was able to get back into this fight. So this is the beginning of the play. Uh, catch on to Willip, but Willip does a really good job of staying alive for as long as possible. Forcing Wisdom to, uh, you know, repel up to drop the turret. Aggro was looking to get that follow-up Q, but from here, Flash Q is enough for him to stay alive. But here comes Matt Murdock. And Boom. he's gone. Uh, yeah, Godbro really recognizes a good there. chance there. Now, Whirlib uh, might get punished again. This time, he's on the wrong side of the turret. Wisdom. Smitty J should finish him off, but God, bro, to the rescue. No, I don't think so. This game's got a little bit messy. It's gotten it's silly. <laughs> it's gotten quite silly. It's okay. Godbro's got top now. Godbro's got two kills as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this this could go fairly heavily now in Huma's way if Godbro gets himself out onto the map. Uh, Wisdom is one that has been taking the kills on the side of the Giants. So uh, he's been piling it in to the Elise. Not opting for... The tank, at least, that we haven't seen in a while. Um, it's been a while since we saw, like, Sin yeah. at least. Well, Runic Echoes is just so good. Everyone's been talking yeah. about how it's, it's too good of a buff to pass up. And yeah. we're seeing, as a result, even tanky AP junglers going for the Runic Echoes and then into tank items. Yeah, we are on 6.5, so it's not the nerfed Runic Echoes it is on live. We will say that. Uh, but it also now means that for Wisdom, you know, he's obviously going to be somewhat uh, squishier than Elise has been in the past. Obviously, we have, as I said, we haven't seen Cinder Hulk in a very long time. Uh, but speaking of uh, pressure, at least mid lane onto Peppy. Yep, Rudy's there. And he goes and body slams in, throws the big barrel, but Peppy has juked him out. A lot of damage being dealt though, and Godbro will finish him up for his third kill of the game. Puma might have lost that tower up top, but they're making good in the mid lane, and they might be able to pressure in the. This one down with the wave they've got. Rudy with a nice body slam flash coming out of that bush made it so that Peppy had a, like half a second, if that yeah. notice, didn't pop the W back into Godbro's waiting arm, then takes it and ends up dying. Uh -oh. So oh. Godbro taking some damage from Wisdom here, but this tower could easily take it down. However, Wisdom does have the Rift Herald buff, so a little more auto attacks out of those minions. Still, they should finish this one off. In comes the Trundle. We're living for the assist on that. And Tower goes down to equalize. Giant's still holding onto a lead, but it's slim. Smitty J ran down for this, though. Uh, he didn't have a tower to push in in the top side. So Giants are still in the lead, regardless of uh, that tower now going down in favor of Huma. Did even it up one to one. Giants want to kind of focus bottom lane or bottom side of the map right now, as you can see it. They want to get this dragon. They just, you know, they want to equalize some of this push in mid. But there's so many wards down on the bottom side for whom are already in their jungle that it does become difficult for Giants to move around. Yeah, not enough, unfortunately, for Huma to prevent this dragon from going down. So Giants do pick up their first of the game and the first in the game at 13. But for Huma, you know, they focused so much attention on that top and on that mid, and they were punishing Giants trying to answer for that. Going back to this bottom lane, it's been a farm fest for Holy Phoenix and Sunstar. Yeah. And Holy Phoenix realizing this goes for the greedy route again with the coal. It might help him later on in the game. Uh. In goes the Bard ultimate. Tempered Fate only knocks in Hustling. And they start to chase him down here, looking under tower, and he goes over with Sky Assault. Not enough damage to take out the cow, yep. unfortunately. I mean, Spell Shield and uh, Unbreakable OP at that point. It's like good luck killing that with a Bard. Ultimate into uh, the rest of the chase. So Huma spend a lot bottom lane. Uh, at least that tempered fate. They did, however, get the Alistair ult and the Sivir ultimate. So yeah. it was a little bit in Oh, response. God, bro. He is just going Oof. ham on this one. And oh. Peppy, juke the observers even on that. In comes the big barrel to knock Smitty J away. And Cass and Rudy are on the defense. Peppy, very squishy on this LeBlanc. His 0-2-0 and hasn't been able to find the pickoff. And that mock completed God, bro, has been having a much better game. He has been having a much better game. Uh, Holy Phoenix. Right oh, now, dodges right into Wisdom. He does trade back effectively, though, and dodges away from the cocoon. Cosmic Finding nails Wisdom in the back, but a magical journey 
Well, I mean, Huma will end the aggression right there. Aggression ended, just utilizing For the time escape being. right there. Yeah, this, this is going to be a very... Oh! He's stunned up. There's a teleport coming in. Godbro's got to make moves quickly now. Smitty knocks him against the wall and Pepe comes in. There's the Moss Shield. The bop up from Smitty J and a shutdown. It's hammer time for Smitty as he picks up that extra gold. <laughs> well, Pyra, there ain't a whole lot to break down in this game because these guys are just fighting all the time. I love it, I love it stress. <laughs> you muted again, Pyra. I did it again. It's all myself. right. You're so excited. Ah! Ah, it's all right. I love it, man. Oh, TP coming in. There's some more fights. These guys to be are done. not holding their summoners <laughs> at all. Peppy, Wisdom, both low. Peppy trying to juke. Rudy not get the dash over the wall. Meanwhile, this tower oh so low. Koss thought he was safe, but then he's got to think again. Wisdom going to burn his flash, and Hustlin knocks him back. The tower will finally go down. What is going on? <laughs> I wish I had an answer to this. It Please is just break this two team down teams for me, just bashing their head against each other. And then I'm here trying to figure out what Willib's going for with his Jorum's Fist. Because you would expect it to be going into Titanic Hydra on this Trundle. But normally you'd get the rest of the Hydra with the Fist and then end up getting other items after. But he's actually got Shut the up. makings yeah. of... Oh, oh, he's gone. He's got the makings of a, uh, partly of a Sterex Gage. He's, well, Joram's Fist, he could be anything right now. But this, okay, this was the fight before. Just be cast comes in, Whirly TP's in as well, and it's all she wrote. Because right now, Huma are full health and Giants are not. Mij did, however, pick up cast because he's top laner against uh, support. So it actually should have resulted in a few more kills there. Um, but for the Giants, they have managed to maintain a bit of a lead right now. Yep. Holy Phoenix gets his call on. His calling, I should say. He's got that and the item. Sonstar and Hustlin taking a little bit of okay. as they push back. So we settled down for just a moment. It Let's is the Titanic stand. Yes. <laughs> so he's got the Titanic. Whew. That's important. That's good to know. Built it in a really weird way. <laughs> World of logic, man. Don't worry about it. Giants are still rocking elite. It's four to four in kills right now. Two to one in towers, and of course they've got the dragon. So they are ahead of the curve. But Huma have shown that they are not quite so susceptible as they were last game to the Siver Comp. And they have been more effectively shutting down Pepe. He only just recently finished up his Merlinomicon. Or am I wrong? Let me check back a few moments. Uh, he had the pots earlier. I didn't see whether he went level two. No, no, he's had it. He's had it for a few minutes. Never mind me. It's all right. It's, it's just one of those games where a lot has happened in the last few minutes. And trying to take stock of when everything happened yeah. at what time is, is a bit of a... You having a good time, though? I am. It, it's quite a fun game with all of this fighting. I'm actually um, surprised. What, that I'm having a good time? Yeah, because you hate fruit. This game is bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I broke scratch. Uh, Smitty. Meanwhile, getting chased away. Peppy as well. God, bro, this guy is just going ham. Holy, Man, holy that's Peppy. That's get on board with. Yep. And, well, juked. Nope. Back to God, bro. <laughs> Uh, Rudy, Rudy said hi, and Peppy said bye. Uh, I really don't know what Peppy is doing right now in this game. Um, by the looks of it, Peppy is being a distraction. Um, he's like waving a flag in front of people, like a red flag, trying to get them to charge. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really work. They get a turret, but they trade it on the top side. But, uh, like, Peppy with four deaths on LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. Well, they do right. keep chasing him down. Like, it, it's partially because Godbro goes on the roam, he picks up the early kills. And now that you see a Fed Quinn roaming around the map, this starts to get dangerous. They should be able to take this last minute Rift Herald. Yep, they will. And, and really the game kind of changes from let's get World of the Split Push to let's get Godbro to Split Push, right? Well, both of them can affect it. Yeah, like really. one for one. I mean, Godbro is so strong against Peppy now. Um, this is the first, well, I say the first, it's only game two of the series. So we've seen Huma utilize the counter pick on mid lane right now, give Godbro the matchup that he wants. Against this LeBlanc, he goes, okay, give me Quinn. I can win the laning phase. I can then transition that into the side push. And Godbro's back out on the map. Yeah, this is a fantastic game from him as he picks up the Rift Herald buff, goes up topside. And unfortunately for Pepe, who is trying to have a nice, quiet farm fest, <laughs> it might get rudely interrupted by Quinn and Valor. If Holy Phoenix still laning, by the way, on this bottom side versus Sansar. He's not got a tower, but he's still at it. If you're trying to have a farm fest, by the way, LeBlanc is probably not the one champion you should... Should big with well, that. when you go 0 and 4, what are you going <laughs> to do? That's, that's true. That's true. I'm just he saying, not up. the best. He, he is out farm. farming. He is yeah, out farming. So God, interesting thing about this uh, Senkux is complaining about this backstage, and I'm going to bring it up because it's funny. And probably Senkux will get mad. Uh, so, a lot of this farm, Senkux was like, you know, Peppy, he, he takes the three small raptors a lot and it inflates his farm. So, it looks like he's always ahead. 
What I hear there is Senkok's just getting a little bit salty. Um, the, that's old school mid lane. Frogan used to do that every single yeah. game, man. It was just like, you put these back, back when I was yeah, casting LPL, not. we used to see that with Wayless all the time, but he would build Spirit of the Spectral Wraith for that. <laughs> back when that was. Oh, like, those days on like yeah. Mariana. He invented Sendo. that, by the way. Nice. He was like, no, 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 this is not your jungle. <laughs> this is my, my jungle camp. Those days. Uh, oh, cool. Holy Phoenix. Peppy wants to answer kill. Dodging out, though. Bard Health Shrine's keeping him nice and healthy. Smitty J even have to run from the terror that is God, bro. He just doesn't have the damage, though, Peppy. No. Um, he's trying to get his... Uh, I'm going to assume he's going Void Staff. Because uh, those are the makings. Doesn't have a needlessly large item. So it means even against people that have, like, no MR, he doesn't actually have that much damage. Yeah. So Giants... I mean, they're still holding a gold lead, but it does seem like they're very haphazard on the map, and Uma just has such a lopsided Quinn matchup against anybody here. What do Giants need to do? Because Peppy's so far down, they have a Sivir comp still to strike pushing. Where do they need to look on the map? They probably need to stop fighting for a while, to be honest. The problem is they've got the Sivir, they've got the Alistair, they actually want to start diving, but the problem is they're not really at a safe enough point. They have to kind of avoid the Quinn, and, but not let her do too much damage at the same time. It's a very tricky balance now to try and play against a split pushing Quinn that you can't actually handle. I'd be interested to see Smitty J try and take on Godbro. I don't think he could do it still. Uh, we may see that, but Cass is here as well. Yeah. Sonstar has gone for Phantom Dancer on top of his Essence Reaver, so... He loves going Phantom Dancer. It's uh, Blue Sivir, or Turquoise Sivir. <laughs> Sounds like a great skin idea, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess you should just run Pax Sivir then. Literally just to recall it. You could run Pax Sivir, yeah, most of could. her stuff is turquoise. It's very true. Uh, it's got that Tron feel going on. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites, actually. Godbro and Peppy, uh, back to the mid lane they go. But I mean, this is just so lopsided. You gotta take a look at the gold between these two. Okay, so it, it's only, it's actually shy of a thousand, yeah. go figure. I, I that's actually, because Peppy keeps getting that farm. I did that when you said uh, he's so far down, I checked it and I'm like, man, he's only 800 down. Yeah, yeah, never mind. not too bad. Yeah. Just like, this is why I don't analyze games. No, it's fine. It just, I yeah. feel like I probably could have alluded to that. And no, it's all right. I mean, I, I was curious how he was uh, not too worried about facing off against Godbro since the chase down has just been so real. Uh, Smitty and Whirlab are back in the bottom side here too. And, you know, with Baron live on the rift, yeah, it's only 22 minutes, but... Teams are already starting to get the vision of trying to jockey for it. And Huma have not placed too many deep wards, surprisingly. Whoa! Godbro goes way the over the vault <laughs> to chase down Peppy's dash. Basically the Olympics here. That's uh, the long jump in action. Yeah. <laughs> I was and trying to back. get a pole vaulting <laughs> joke, maybe, but I, it doesn't really work. I mean, he was flying. And Godbro, I mean, Godbro's just had a great game on this. The thing is, can this carry his team to a win? That's the question we have to ask. Who typically it has been able to pyre out, we'll tell you that much. Um, the thing for Godbro, though, is he kind of has become an all or nothing player recently. We, we spoke during the split about being able to play utility. There you go. Um, problem is, he's actually kind of regressed. And annoyingly, I actually feel like that about a lot of Huma. Um, this is going to sound quite critical, but Willib. Uh, the end of his time with Giants, we were saying he's started to adapt his playstyle. He can play more than solo carries. He can do more than split push. We saw the Hecarim engage. We started to see him start playing tanks. That's kind of regressed for Huma. Um, he still does play tanks, but I'm just not as convinced as I was anymore. Yeah, I mean, the Ramus um, wasn't that great. Yeah, it was It was, it was also the choice in the team. Right, it, it was the choice for the team, and it was fine. We've seen... Uh, Willard playing the likes of Nautilus. We've seen, uh, I think, a Maokai game from him in Challenger as well. Which is, you know, more meta now that we're going to see 6-6 and everything pretty soon. Yeah. So it's, it's all helpful. It's all... But, but I'm, I'm speaking but less about the champions, but his performance on them. He started to be a little better at that uh, when he was playing the Giants in the last couple of weeks, and I feel like that's kind of dropped. I'm being very cool. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> completely fair. We'll have to see if Huma are able to pick up those pieces, though, because... They were the Challenger champions. They did have a close, but convincing series against the Copenhagen Wolves. And, you know, even though they went down against Rocket, this is still a chance to make it into the LCS. As Rudy's getting chased down. There's on the hunt pop. Jitsui Kost hits nobody with the tempered face. Sansar had his spell shield up for it. Whirla trying to zone Sansar off, but he runs right into Wisdom now. Trying to take a bite out of the spider. Can he get the kill? Clubs him to death. And now, 
The fight is on in the jungle. Rudy, they might have enough damage here. Meanwhile, Godbro onto Peppy, half health him without taking any damage in return. And he pops the mirror image. Rudy hopping over the wall, or rather he was batted over the wall. And now they're gonna re-engage on this one. In comes Godbro, and he sees a smorgasbord of kills available to him. Jesui Koss picks up one for himself. Three members of Giants already down. Hustlin is trying to do just that, but Holy Phoenix says no, and it is a 4-4-0 four, four, for Huma. Nobody from Giants can deal with Wurlib, let alone Godbro either. Willib stood between three people and did not take any damage. From the side there, Godbro comes in, pretty much pops Peppy, uh, gets the Dusk Blade proc onto him to get that passive and then follows up with an ultimate proc. And honestly, Huma right now, they've got too many threats and Giants have too few answers to actually deal with this. Sunstar just doesn't deal damage to uh, any of the tanks from Huma. Yeah, he's trying to pick off Godbro, but you know, this Baron is already gonna go down. Sunstar on the hunts just to get away. And the traffic cone comes down. Wisdom looking for a chase off onto Godbro, but good luck catching a Quinn, especially when you're rocking that summoner spell and you've got Rudy in your back pocket. So, cleanse proving very effective there. And all five members of Huna, Huma escape with that Baron buff as Wisdom is still on the hunt for a kill. Let's see how this fight all happens again. So watch as Willib comes up from the bottom side. This looks like a really good engage for Giants. They managed to stop the battle doing anything. They chase just we cast and Rudy back, but now it's Willib's time to shine. He turns on Sunstar first, puts an auto down. But look at this damage and the tankiness from Willib. He's already utilized that ultimate, has the extra resistances from here. Wait for that dust plate to pop. Gets it on Pepe. Doesn't kill him, but it's enough to set up the rest of the fight from here now. It's a three adjustment for Huma. Because Sunstar's still not doing damage in and to all in this fight. He spent most of this fight running away, not autoing. He only threw out a couple of Qs. And that's just not enough damage for Giants here. Pepe couldn't get in the fight because he was just dying too quickly. To Dragon going over to Huma, they got the Baron. This game has been all about Huma now. They've managed to close the goal gap and take themselves a bit of a lead. Yeah. All eyes on Godbro. See if he can help maneuver this team into a win to even the series up. They are still in a slim lead situation. It could turn on a dime, but this Giants composition, Pepe just never got rolling on this LeBlanc and has not been incredibly effective. Yeah, he's tried to take people out quickly, but he's been blown up himself even quicker. And the split push comp that Huma are just so fond of can now come into play. It's a 4-1 for now. Let's see if Hustle and Sanskar can stop this push. So far, they can. Yeah, it's just been tough for Pepe, though. He's been in this matchup where Godbro has just always wanted to trade with him all the time and has just that bolt, the, the blind, everything about it made it super difficult for Pepe to actually take yeah. the trade. Now Sunstar loses pretty much all of his health. Yeah, Smitty can't even get in. I mean, they just they just block him up. They've got the Trundle Pillar. And they've got a lot of damage to deter him. Sunstar happens. So look at Godbro just able to continually push up mid and it's only Pepe there to defend. Now, I guess if there's one saving grace for Pepe is that he can't be worth any gold anymore. At least he's not giving <laughs> any more to Godbro. <laughs> Yeah, I oh, oh hey, it's Rudy, and down goes Peppy. That was quick. That was quick. I mean, Godbro did most of the work. Rudy comes in for the uh, the final little bit of an assist. Huma still pushing in two lanes, not playing off three because they don't need to right now in their minds. And now they start pushing down on the bottom side. Win to win, Godbro back to the mid, and there's really only Sunstar there to defend. Wisdom going to try to make the play here, but he is just getting stomped. Smitty J gets the knockup on three, and he walks away from this one, but he can't walk out of the Bard ultimate. Hustlin trying oh, to push them back. They don't have enough damage to kill Smitty, though. Oh, Cass. He had the lineup on the two people in the Bard ult, sent out the Q too early. In they go, though. Yeah, some mistakes still being made, but Giants too far gone in this game, it looks like. Inhibitor Tower is down. Inhibitor will fall soon. They just don't have any defense, and Smitty J can't bring the hammer down fast enough. That's Inhibitor 1. 28 minutes into the game, and that's a hell of a barren power play on the end of it. Yeah, 5,000. This game has exploded. As, uh, this is the setup. From Godbro, getting the Even new Rudy was there. Every time W comes forward from Pepe, he gets vaulted, locked down on the spot, and uh, the follow-up comes. So the rest of Giants came up to try and you know get something done here, but they ended up losing so much bottom lane. Everybody went mid. And Huma just go, okay, well, we'll take a tower. We'll end push bot tower from this as well. Uh, that was kind of it for the Giants. It couldn't really contend against this. Yeah. Uh, we're about to see the battle. 
Here's the ult. There it goes. Look at the timing, though. Just because that's a perfect line here. Oh, he flashed his two. Oh! oh that's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> Feels bad. It really does. Still, I mean, they may have picked up a little bit more off of that, but as it stands, Huma keep evening up the gold lead. You know, it really has swung pretty massively in their favor after uh, being fairly even for a lot of it. Giants still picking up some leads, but they haven't really had much since the laning phase. And Godbro getting fed just keeps going and going further. You can see what he's been able to do, picking up that dust blade that you mentioned earlier. Uh, at this point, he just keeps dishing out even more damage, and he's just so speedy. Swifty, Swifty Boots combined with Quinn's natural mobility. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that, that's a mountain that Giants has fallen off. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's actually falling off the ground. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got much more about so we're that. We're on track right now, Stress, because Giants have won all the game one yeah, of the exactly. tournament, but then game two has been another story. Game two has been they take the lead and then end up losing. Um, and that's exactly what has happened here. So Giants, hey, maybe this is the consistency we were looking for from Giants. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really wonder if they had committed to the same kind of Sivir comp as last time and, and picked the Lissandra, which was available for both teams, Yeah. if this might not be different. Because then Pepe being down six deaths, wouldn't have meant as much because at least he has the utility constantly, whereas this LeBlanc is effectively useless right now, unless he can pick somebody off. Yeah, I mean, this comp in general is fairly difficult to come from behind with at this point. Um, Sive has only just got a third item complete, so she actually just doesn't scratch will it at all. Uh, and th this ties in with, with Giants' pretty much signature issues, all split long, yeah. and, and even through this tournament. When they fall behind, they have a real hard time coming back into the game and turning it around. Part of that is to do with how the game flows right now and the meta when you, when it, you look at death timers, that kind of thing. So as long as they are, regardless of whether you play the game often or not, you tend to take enough objectives from a fight or giants. Speak of fights. Hustling. Oh, Wisdom takes out Kass on this one and Rudy whips the barrel. There's a shutdown for Smitty J and all of a sudden, boom up overextended. Ig Way too much pressure on the Hustlin. Whirlip now caught between five, and they give him up for dead. A quick three kill swing for Giants, and that might just get him back in if they can defend. They're losing Nexus turrets to Super Minion. Yeah, they can lose one Nexus turret, but what can they get on the rest of the map? They may not. This bit? Oh, it's so close. Minion died. Okay, Super Minion died before they lost the turret, so they just hold it with like 10 health left. And there's 30 seconds on Baron. Whirlip's not going to be up in time. They're going to race for this. Yeah, they can race, but it's a 50 50. Uh, I mean, Holy Phoenix will be available. Rudy will be there as well. And look at the vision control that's top side for Rume. I don't think you can actually race for it. Wisdom's bottom side anyway. So it's not something that Giants are really prioritizing. They need to be around so that Huma can't rush it themselves. But with that bottom inhibitor being down, they cannot really contest over a Baron right now. Uh, it kind of has to be a 50 steal coming from the Giants, which uh, their old jungler, Frederick, was uh, known for his ability to steal. Yeah, Wisdom definitely known for some other things, different. Giants have gone through a couple of junglers, though. You know, they had Batong Yaki in there for oh. a little while. But enough about yeah. the history lessons, because Baron. Uma are starting this off, and they've got a lot of damage. Uh, Holy Phoenix dashing over the wall. They've already got it down to 7,500. Giants slow to react here. Yeah. No teleport for Look the mid day. Hustlin is way too slow to this, and that has gone down. Now they've caught the cow as well. He's got a flash. He might have to use it, but can he even get away in time? Way tanky, but is it gonna be enough? They start chasing him down on the hunt. The Bard ulti catches Smitty J. They puff the barrel up and he goes in onto Rudy. Can they win this fight? Godbro around the side. Some squishy members here. Rudy gets a big barrel off, and Giants are just going way too low. Godbro's gone hunting. Whirlip gets one kill on his Sunstar. Godbro with the rampage kill. for Wisdom. Can he find him? No. Tanking the tower. Whirlip going into Peppy right now as Wisdom gets his proc off on the Zhonyas. Takes a bite out of Peppy. Whirlib getting some revenge on his former teammate. And Smitty's going down as well. Might take a while on this Poppy. But holy hell, Huma have come up big. Huma have come up big. This should be enough to just lock the second game in the books. Huma looking to even this one up. They're going to take the second Nexus turret. And this is going to be the game. One to one, Huma will equalize at 34 minutes into the game. Not without its mistakes either, but this time they proved that they can go all the way. And honestly, I mean, Giants had to try and do something. The problem was Hustlin shouldn't be that far up towards the Baron without the rest of his team. They saw where Wisdom was coming out of the base still. 
and you can't go into the river. One versus five. To, I mean, you're Alice, you're not going to contend that. You have no way of stealing. So all you can do is provide vision. He was trying to hover around the area. He gets caught. It drags the rest of his team into a team fight that they're too far behind to win if they're not the ones starting it out. And Giants, they were, they were behind. They were trying to do anything. Unfortunately, that wasn't the right play. Uh, yeah, I think that's safe to say. Uh, Giants, I mean, it was still, as you said, a more difficult to execute composition, and mm. Giants have been punished by that fact before, overextending. This time, they just really never got on the right foot, and Godbro was stepping all over them. Yeah, Godbro was. I mean, it's so much came from the early uh, advantage that Godbro had that even though Giants, you could see that they were fairly effective at team fighting, problem was there was those two or three fights in the middle uh, of the game, and uh, Godbro just got too big of a lead. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was looking at the damage. He didn't even do as much as the Poppy and the Sivir, but he just made it count <laughs> where he needed to. But we'll let the analysts break that one down even further as they send it over to see Huma's win to tie the series. Yeah, and everything we talked about